my concern has always been since we were misled with the intelligence to go into Iraq and all the number of young men and women who have been killed and lost limbs that Congress needs to come back to what the Constitution says. Well, then again, and uh, when President Obama decided to go in and bomb Libya, uh, that again brought it to my mind, well, here we go again, here's an administration that has bypassed Congress, meaning bypassed the Constitution, which is more important than Congress, really. The facility with which the President of the United States can take this apathetic nation to war and kill people. We've come to a point in this empire's history that I spend most of my time that's free studying so I can relate it to my students. In the last decade, by conservative Pentagon estimates, we have killed over 300,000 people. That's a sobering thought, especially when there is no existential threat to the United States of America whatsoever. And it's all suggested, well, Al-Qaeda or somehow misguided forces have gone in and interrupted the perfect democratic evolution that we all were hoping would flower after Qaddafi was removed. But that's not true. I mean, the reason why I was killed precisely because of our intervention. We set the stage for a country that now is semi-anarchic like Somalia. We destroyed the entire social, cultural infrastructure uh, that at least had some solidity under Qaddafi and we had no responsibility for. We go in, destroy everything. And then we can't understand why by spontaneous combustion, a new country didn't emerge that loves the United States and you find George Washington's and James Madison's everywhere. I mean, that's really, it's hallucinogenic is what it is. What we call a combination of legislative, executive, judicial power plus being executioner, all in one man which the Founding Fathers described in Federalist 47 as the very definition of tyranny. Now think of that. The whole reason we had the Declaration of Independence and fought the war of the American Revolution was what? To end the tyranny of King George III. And now we're practicing exactly what we revolted against some 225, 230 years ago. If he says, you're in imminent danger to the United States, you get vaporized, predator drone. Any judicial review? No. Any congressional review? No. Any disclosure of the profile, the intelligence that justifies the finding you're one of the terrorists we're going to vaporize? No. All secret. And finally, to me, it almost is an obscenity that we have presidents suggesting that they can go to war without consulting Congress, getting authorization, if they talk to the UN Security Council, the Arab League, Mr. Netanyahu, AIPAC, you know. All these institutions have no accountability to the American people, and that's who he consults? That's who he consults? You know, Congress in that scenario looks like an extra in a Cecil B. DeMille extravaganza. The Libya war was also viewed as a strategic turning point in both Moscow and China. We've seen this in the fact that the Russians and the Chinese have uh, vetoed every action at the UN Security Council that might even remotely suggest that we're about to enter into a replay of Libya in Syria. And in particular, both the top military leadership in Russia and China have warned that we're not simply facing the danger of constitutional erosion or regional wars but that if these situations continue in the direction that they're going, we could very well find ourselves stumbling into a situation of general war. Quote, America should give the world soldiers who dot, 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 dot. Is that what America should give the world? Soldiers? That's what we're giving them. And let me tell you, if you read the international news, you read the papers in Tehran, in Damascus, in Beirut, in Cairo, in Tripoli. The rest of the world, which is about six billion people, realizes it. And anybody who knows any theory of international relations at all, and any theory of power at all, knows 
that the rest of the world will eventually marshal its forces and bring us down. Look from 1947 to 2012. This is a natural evolution of power. This is what was going to happen as soon as Harry Truman on the 26th of July put his signature to the 1947 National Security Act. George Marshall looked at the president, perhaps the most iconic military figure other than George Washington in American history, and certainly the master of our victory in World War II, and said, Mr. President, I fear we have militarized the decision-making process. It's that simple. That's the way the world works. Every empire in human history is gone, whether it's the empire of the Khans or the thousand-year Reich of Adolf Hitler. They're gone. Nowhere in the world is it written in stone that the American empire is an exception, different, and going to last forever. It isn't. The founders would be stunned that we haven't thrown a scurrilous bastard out every generation. They'd be absolutely stunned. Now, many suggest, oh, impeachment sounds like a coup d'etat, like third only banana republics do impeachment. At the Constitutional Convention, Ben Franklin said no. Impeachment is a substitute for assassination. So it is the civilized way in which we don't impose criminal punishment. It's simply ouster of office. We cannot trust you. Uh, and the reason why the Founding Fathers were so intent on having a very exacting standard to enter war is precisely because war is the law of the jungle. Cicero had said 2,000 years before, in times of war, the law is silent. You remember when Democracy Wall was up in, in, in Beijing, at Tiananmen Square, the people are carrying around copies of the Declaration of Independence, and we encourage that. We are human beings, we have values that we believe in, but we know they would be destroyed if we start to export them at the end of a bayonet. Because we are a potent force for good in the world, not because of the military we thrust upon the world and the bayonets we arm for democracy, but because our values, when they are exemplified and adhered to, really do impact change in the world. Whether it's human rights, human dignity, women's rights, or any of the things that we say we stand for and often by our actions bastardize completely. That's why it's important we stay around for a while. Chaos and anarchy are the alternative. And we're doing our level best to create that chaos and anarchy right now. Congressman Walter Jones, he reminds me of an observation then President Andrew Jackson made when he was asked, what is a majority? He said, one man with courage. Mm -hmm.